Chapter 20 Description of Autumn The killing of Pralambasura and the devouring of the devastating forest fire by Krishna and Balaram became household topics in Vrindavan. The cowherd men described these wonderful activities to their wives and to everyone else, and all were struck with wonder. They concluded that Krishna and Balaram were demigods who had kindly come to Vrindavan to become their children. In this way, the rainy season ensued. In India, after the scorching heat of the summer, the rainy season is very welcome. The clouds accumulating in the sky, covering the sun and the moon, become very pleasing to the people, and they expect rainfall at every moment. After summer, the advent of the rainy season is considered to be a life-giving source for everyone. The thunder and occasional lightning are also pleasurable to the people. The symptoms of the rainy season may be compared to the symptoms of the living entities who are covered by the three modes of material nature. The unlimited sky is like the supreme Brahman, and the tiny living entities are like the covered sky or Brahman covered by the three modes of material nature. Originally, everyone is part and parcel of Brahman. The supreme Brahman or the unlimited sky can never be covered by a cloud, but a portion of it can be covered. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, the living entities are part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but they are only an insignificant portion of the Supreme Lord. This portion is covered by the modes of material nature, and therefore the living entities are residing within this material world. The Brahma Jyoti, spiritual effulgence, is just like the sunshine. As the sunshine is full of molecular shining particles, so the Brahma Jyoti is full of minute portions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Out of that unlimited expansion of minute portions of the Supreme Lord, some are covered by the influence of material nature, whereas others are free. Clouds are accumulated water, drawn from the land by the sunshine. Continually for eight months, the sun evaporates all kinds of water from the surface of the globe, and thus this water is accumulated in the shape of clouds, which are distributed as water when there is need. Similarly, a government exacts various taxes from the citizens, which the citizens are able to pay by their different material activities, agriculture, trade, and industry. Thus, the government can also exact taxes in the form of income tax and sales tax. This is compared to the sun's drawing water from the earth. When there is again need of water on the surface of the globe, the same sunshine converts the water into clouds and distributes it all over the globe. Similarly, the taxes collected by the government must be distributed to the people again as educational work, public work, sanitary work, etc. This is very essential for a good government. The government should not simply exact tax for useless squandering. The tax collection should be utilized for the public welfare of the state. During the rainy season, 
There are strong winds blustering all over the country and carrying clouds from one place to another to distribute water. When water is urgently needed after the summer season, the clouds are just like a rich man who, in times of need, distributes his money, even by exhausting his whole treasury. So the clouds exhaust themselves by distributing water all over the surface of the globe. When Maharaj Dasarath, the father of Lord Ramchandra, used to fight with his enemies, it was said that he approached them just like a farmer uprooting unnecessary plants and trees. And when there was need of giving charity, he used to distribute money exactly as a cloud distributes rain. The distribution of rain by clouds is so sumptuous that it is compared to the distribution of wealth by a great munificent person. The clouds' downpour is so sufficient that the rains even fall on rocks and hills and on the oceans and seas where there is no need for water. It is like a charitable person who opens his treasury for distribution and who does not discriminate whether the charity is needed or not. He gives in charity open-handed. Before the rainfall, the whole surface of the globe becomes almost depleted of all kinds of energies and appears very lean. After the rainfall, the whole surface of the earth becomes green with vegetation and appears to be very healthy and strong. Here a comparison is made to the person undergoing austerities for fulfillment of a material desire. The flourishing condition of the earth after a rainy season is compared to the fulfillment of material desires. Sometimes when a country is subjugated by an undesirable government, persons and parties undergo severe penances and austerities to get control of the government. And when they attain control, they flourish by giving themselves generous salaries. This also is like the flourishing of the earth in the rainy season. Actually, one should undergo severe austerities and penances only to achieve spiritual happiness. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is recommended that tapasya or penance should be accepted for realizing the Supreme Lord. By accepting austerity in devotional service, one regains his spiritual life, and as soon as one regains his spiritual life, he enjoys unlimited spiritual bliss. But if someone undertakes austerities and penances for some material gain, it is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that the results are temporary and that they are desired by persons of less intelligence. During the rainy season, in the evening, there are many glowworms visible about the tops of trees, hither and thither, and they glitter just like lights. But the luminaries of the sky, the stars and the moon, are not visible. Similarly, in the age of Kali, persons who are atheists or miscreants become very prominently visible whereas persons who are actually following the Vedic principles for spiritual emancipation are practically obscured. This age, Kali Yuga, is compared to the cloudy season of the living entities. In this age, real knowledge is covered by the influence of material advancement of civilization. The cheap mental speculators 
atheists, and manufacturers of so-called religious principles become prominent like the glowworms, whereas persons strictly following the Vedic principles or scriptural injunctions become covered by the clouds of this age. People should learn to take advantage of the actual luminaries of the sky, the sun, moon, and stars, instead of the glowworm's light. Actually, the glowworm cannot give any light in the darkness of night. As clouds sometimes clear, even in the rainy season, and sometimes the moon, stars, and sun become visible, so even in this Kali Yuga, there are sometimes advantages. The Vedic movement of Lord Chaitanya's, the distribution of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra is heard in this way. People seriously anxious to find real light should take advantage of this movement instead of looking toward the light of mental speculators and atheists. After the first rainfall, when there is a thundering sound in the clouds, all the frogs begin to croak, like students suddenly engaged in reading their studies. Students are generally supposed to rise early in the morning. They do not usually arise of their own accord, however, but only when there is a bell sounded in the temple or in the cultural institution. By the order of the spiritual master, they immediately rise, and after finishing their morning duties, they sit down to study the Vedas or chant Vedic mantras. Everyone is sleeping in the darkness of Kali Yuga, but when there is a great Acharya, by his calling only, everyone takes to the study of the Vedas to acquire actual knowledge. During the rainy season, many small ponds, lakes, and rivulets become filled with water. Otherwise, the rest of the year, they remain dry. Similarly, materialistic persons are dry. But sometimes, when they are in a so-called opulent position, with a home or children, or a little bank balance, they appear to be flourishing. But immediately afterwards, they become dry again, like the small rivulets and ponds. The poet Vidyapati said that in the society of friends, family, children, wife, etc., there is certainly some pleasure, but that pleasure is compared to a drop of water in the desert. Everyone is hankering after happiness, just as in the desert. Everyone is hankering after water. If in the desert there is a drop of water, the water is there, of course, but the benefit from that drop of water is very insignificant. In our materialistic way of life, we are hankering after an ocean of happiness, but in the form of society, friends, and mundane love, we are getting no more than a drop of water. Our satisfaction is never achieved as the small rivulets, lakes, and ponds are never filled with water in the dry season. Due to rainfall, the grass, trees, and vegetation look very green. Sometimes the grass is covered by a certain kind of red insect. And when the green and red combine with umbrella-like mushrooms, the entire scene changes, just like a person who has suddenly become rich. The farmer then becomes very happy to see his field full of grains. But the capitalists, who are always unaware of the activities of a supernatural power, become unhappy because they are afraid of a competitive price. In some places, certain capitalists in government restrict the farmer from producing too much grain, 
not knowing the actual fact that all food grains are supplied by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. According to the Vedic injunction, Eko Bahunam Yo Vedadati Kaman, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, maintains this creation. Therefore, he arranges for a supply of whatever is required for all living entities. When there is a population increase, it is the business of the Supreme Lord to feed the people. But atheists or miscreants do not like abundant production of food grains, especially if their business might be hampered. During the rainy season, all living entities in the land, sky, and water become very refreshed, exactly like one who engages in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. We have practical experience of this with our students in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Before becoming students, they were dirty looking, although they had naturally beautiful personal features. Due to having no information of Krishna consciousness, they appeared very dirty and wretched. Since they have taken to Krishna consciousness, their health has improved, and by their following the rules and regulations, their bodily luster has increased. When they are dressed with saffron-colored cloth with tilak on their foreheads and beads in their hands and on their necks, they look exactly as if they come directly from Vaikuntha. In the rainy season, when the rivers swell and rush to the oceans and seas, they appear to agitate the ocean. Similarly, if a person who is engaged in the yoga mystic process is not very advanced in spiritual life, he can become agitated by the sex impulse. High mountains, however, although splashed by torrents of rain, do not change. So, a person who is advanced in Krishna consciousness, even if put into difficulties, is not embarrassed because a person who is spiritually advanced accepts any adverse condition of life as the mercy of the Lord and thus he is completely eligible to enter into the spiritual kingdom. In the rainy season, some of the roads are not frequently used, and they become covered with long grasses. This is exactly like a Brahmin who is not accustomed to studying and practicing the reformatory methods of Vedic injunctions. He becomes covered with the long grasses of Maya. In that condition, forgetful of his constitutional nature, he forgets his position of eternal servitorship to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By being deviated by the seasonal overgrowth of long grasses created by Maya, a person identifies himself with Maya production and succumbs to illusion, forgetting his spiritual life. During the rainy season, lightning appears in one group of clouds, and then immediately in another group of clouds. This phenomenon is compared to a lusty woman who does not fix her mind on one man. A cloud is compared to a qualified person because it pours rain and gives sustenance to many people. A man who is qualified similarly gives sustenance to many living creatures, such as family members or many workers in business. Unfortunately, his whole life can be disturbed by a wife who divorces him. When the husband is disturbed, the whole family is ruined, the children are dispersed, or the business is closed, and everything is affected. It is therefore recommended that a woman desiring to advance in Krishna consciousness live peacefully with a husband, 
and that the couple not separate under any condition. The husband and wife should control sex indulgence and concentrate their minds on Krishna consciousness so their life may be successful. After all, in the material world, a man requires a woman and a woman requires a man. When they are combined, they should live peacefully in Krishna consciousness and should not be restless like the lightning flashing from one group of clouds to another. Sometimes, in addition to the roaring thunder of the clouds, there is an appearance of a rainbow which stands as a bow without a string. Actually, a bow is in the curved position, being tied at its two ends by the bowstring. But in the rainbow, there is no such string, and yet it rests in the sky so beautifully. Similarly, when the Supreme Personality of Godhead descends to this material world, he appears just like an ordinary human being, but he is not resting on any material condition. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that he appears by his internal potency, which is free from the bondage of the external potency. What is bondage for the ordinary creature is freedom for the Personality of Godhead. In the rainy season, the moonlight is covered by clouds, but is visible at intervals. It sometimes appears that the moon is moving with the movement of the clouds, but actually the moon is still. Due to the clouds, it also appears to move. Similarly, for one who has identified himself with the moving material world, his actual spiritual luster is covered by illusion, and with the movement of material activities, he thinks that he is moving through the different spheres of life. This is due to false ego, which is the demarcation between spiritual and material existence, just as the moving cloud is the demarcation between moonlight and darkness. In the rainy season, when the clouds appear for the first time, after seeing their appearance, the peacocks begin to dance with joy. This can be compared to persons who are very harassed in the materialistic way of life. If they can find the association of a person engaged in the loving devotional service of the Lord, they become enlightened and dance just like peacocks. We have practical experience of this because many of our students were dry and morose previous to their coming to Krishna consciousness. But having come into contact with devotees, they are now dancing like jubilant peacocks. Plants and creepers grow by drinking water from the ground. Similarly, a person practicing austerities becomes dry, but after the austere performances are completed and he gets the result, he begins to enjoy life in sense gratification with family, society, love, home, and other paraphernalia. Sometimes it is seen that cranes and ducks meander continually on the banks of the lakes and rivers, although the banks are filled with muddy garbage and thorny creepers. Similarly, persons who are householders without Krishna consciousness are constantly tarrying in material life in spite of all kinds of inconveniences. In family life or any life, one cannot be perfectly happy without being Krishna conscious. Srila Naratam Das Thakur prays that he will have the association of a person 
either a householder or a man in the renounced order of life, who is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, and is always crying the holy name of Lord Chaitanya. For the materialistic person, worldly affairs become too aggressive, whereas to a person who is in Krishna consciousness, everything appears to be happily situated. The barriers around the agricultural field sometimes break due to heavy torrents of rain. Similarly, the unauthorized atheistic propaganda in the age of Kali breaks the boundary of the Vedic injunctions. Thus people gradually degenerate to godlessness. In the rainy season, the clouds tossed by the wind deliver water, which is welcomed like nectar. When the Vedic followers, the Brahmins, inspire rich men like kings and the wealthy mercantile community to give charity in the performance of great sacrifices, the distribution of such wealth is also nectarian. The four sections of human society, namely the Brahmins, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and Sudras, are meant to live peacefully in a cooperative mood. This is possible when they are guided by the expert Vedic Brahmins who perform sacrifices and distribute wealth equally. Vrindavan forest improved from the rains and was replete with ripened dates, mangoes, blackberries, and other fruits. Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and his boyfriends and Lord Balaram entered the forest to enjoy the new seasonal atmosphere. The cows, being fed by new grasses, became very healthy, and their milk bags were all very full. When Lord Krishna called them by name, they immediately came to him out of affection, and in their joyful condition the milk flowed from their bags. Lord Krishna was very pleased when passing through the Vrindavan forest by the sight of Govardhan Hill. On the bank of the Yamuna, he saw all the trees decorated with beehives pouring honey. There were waterfalls on Govardhan Hill, and their flowing made a nice sound. Krishna heard them as he looked into the caves of the hill. When the rainy season was not ended completely, but was gradually turning into autumn, sometimes, especially when there was rainfall within the forest, Krishna and his companions would sit under a tree or within the caves of Govardhan Hill and enjoy eating the ripened fruits and talking with great pleasure. When Krishna and Balaram were in the forest all day, Mother Yashoda used to send them some fruits, sweetmeats, and rice mixed with yogurt. Krishna would take them and sit on a slab of stone on the bank of the Yamuna. While Krishna and Balaram and their friends were eating, they watched the cows, calves, and bulls. The cows appeared to be tired from standing with their heavy milk bags. By sitting and chewing grass, they became happy, and Krishna was pleased to see them. He was proud to see the beauty of the forest, which was nothing but the manifestation of his own energy. At such times, Krishna would praise nature's special activities during the rainy season. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita that the material energy or nature is not independent in its actions. Nature is acting under the superintendence of Krishna. It is also stated in the Brahma Samhita that material nature, known as Durga, is acting as the shadow of Krishna. Whatever order is sent from Krishna, material nature obeys. Therefore, the natural beauty created by the rainy season 
was acted out according to the indications of Krishna. Soon, all the water reservoirs became clean and pleasing, and refreshing air was blowing everywhere because of the appearance of autumn. The sky was completely cleared of all clouds, and it recovered its natural blue color. The blooming lotus flower in the clear water in the forest appeared like a person who has fallen down from yoga practice but again has become beautiful by resuming his spiritual life. Everything becomes naturally beautiful with the appearance of the autumn season. Similarly, when a materialistic person takes to Krishna consciousness and spiritual life, he also becomes as clear as the sky and water in autumn. The autumn season takes away the rolling of dark clouds in the sky, as well as the polluted water. Filthy conditions on the ground also become cleansed. Similarly, a person who takes to Krishna consciousness immediately becomes cleansed of all dirty things within and without. Krishna is, therefore, known as Hari. Hari means he who takes away. Krishna immediately takes away all unclean habits from anyone who takes to Krishna consciousness. The clouds of autumn are white, for they do not carry any water. Similarly, a retired man, being freed from all responsibility of family affairs, namely maintaining the home, wife and children, and taking completely to Krishna consciousness, becomes freed from all anxieties and looks as white as clouds in autumn. Sometimes in autumn, the falls come down from the top of the hill to supply clean water, and sometimes they stop. Similarly, sometimes great saintly persons distribute clear knowledge, and sometimes they are silent. The small ponds, which were filled with water because of the rainy season, gradually dry up in autumn. As for the tiny aquatics living in the reservoirs, they cannot understand that their numbers are diminishing day by day, as the materially engrossed persons cannot understand that their duration of life is being reduced day by day. Such persons are engaged in maintaining cows, property, children, wife, society, and friendship. Due to the reduced water and scorching heat from the sun in the autumn season, the small creatures living in small reservoirs of water are much disturbed. They are exactly like uncontrolled persons who are always unhappy from being unable to enjoy life or maintain their family members. The muddy earth gradually dries up, and newly grown fresh vegetables begin to wither. Similarly, for one who has taken to Krishna consciousness, desire for family enjoyment gradually dries up. Because of the appearance of the autumn season, the water of the ocean becomes calm and quiet, just as a person developed in self-realization is no longer disturbed by the three modes of material nature. In autumn, farmers save the water within the fields by building strong walls so that the water contained within the field cannot run out. There is hardly any hope for new rainfalls, therefore they want to save whatever is in the field. Similarly, a person who is actually advanced in self-realization protects his energy by controlling the senses. It is advised 
that after the age of 50, one should retire from family life and should conserve the energy of the body for utilization in the advancement of Krishna consciousness. Unless one is able to control the senses and engage them in the transcendental loving service of Mukunda, there is no possibility of salvation. During the daytime in autumn, the sun is very scorching, but at night, due to the clear moonshine, people get relief from the day's fatigue. If a person takes shelter of Mukunda or Krishna, he can be saved from the fatigue of misidentifying the body with the self. Mukunda or Krishna is also the source of solace to the damsels of Vrindavan. The damsels of Rajabhumi are always suffering because of separation from Krishna. When they meet Krishna during the moonlit autumn night, their fatigue of separation is also satiated. When the sky is clear of all clouds, the stars at night shine very beautifully. Similarly, when a person is actually situated in Krishna consciousness, he is cleared of all dirty things, and he becomes as beautiful as the stars in the autumn sky. Although the Vedas prescribe karma in the form of offering sacrifices, their ultimate purpose is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. One has to accept Krishna consciousness after thoroughly understanding the purpose of the Vedas. Therefore, the clean heart exhibited by a devotee in Krishna consciousness can be compared to the clean sky of the autumn season. During autumn, the moon looks very bright along with the stars in the clear sky. Lord Krishna himself appeared in the sky of the Yadu dynasty, and he was exactly like the moon surrounded by the stars or the members of the Yadu dynasty. When there are ample blooming flowers in the gardens in the forest, the fresh aromatic breeze gives a great relief to the person who has suffered during the summer and rainy seasons. Unfortunately, such breezes could not give any relief to the gopis because of their heart's dedication to Krishna. People in general might have taken pleasure in that nice autumn breeze, but the gopis, not being embraced by Krishna, were not very satisfied. On arrival of the autumn season, all the cows, deer, birds, and females in general become pregnant, because in that season generally all the husbands become impelled by sex desire. This is exactly like the transcendentalists who, by the grace of the Supreme Lord, are bestowed with the benediction of their destinations in life. Srila Rupa Goswami has instructed in his Upadesha Amrita that one should follow devotional service with great enthusiasm, patience, and conviction, and should follow the rules and regulations, keep oneself clean from material contamination, and stay in the association of devotees. By following these principles, one is sure to achieve the desired result of devotional service. For he who patiently follows the regulative principles of devotional service, the time will come when he will achieve the result, like the wives who reap results by becoming pregnant. During the autumn, the lotus flowers in the lakes grow in large numbers because of the absence of lilies. Both the lilies and the lotus flowers grow by sunshine, but during the autumn season the scorching sunshine helps only the lotus. 
This example is given in the case of a country where the king or the government is strong. The rise of unwanted elements like thieves and robbers cannot prosper. When the citizens become confident that they will not be attacked by robbers, they develop very satisfactorily. A strong government is compared to the scorching sunshine in the autumn season. The lilies are compared to unwanted persons like robbers, and the lotus flowers are compared to the satisfied citizens of the government. During autumn, the fields become filled with ripened grains. At that time, the people become happy over the harvest and observe various ceremonies such as Navana, the offering of new grains to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The new grains are first offered to the deities in various temples, and all are invited to take sweet rice made of these new grains. There are other religious ceremonies and methods of worship, particularly in Bengal, where the greatest of such ceremonies is held called Durga Puja. In Vrindavan, the autumn season was very beautiful then because of the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna and Balaram. The mercantile community, the royal order, and great sages were free to move to achieve their desired benedictions. Similarly, the transcendentalists, when freed from the encagement of the material body, also achieved their desired goal. During the rainy season, the mercantile community cannot move from one place to another, and so do not get their desired profit. Nor can the royal order go from one place to another to collect taxes from the people. As for saintly persons who must travel to preach transcendental knowledge, they also are restrained by the rainy season. But during the autumn, all of them leave their confines. In the case of the transcendentalist, be he a jnani, a yogi, or a devotee, because of the material body, he cannot actually enjoy spiritual achievement. But as soon as he gives up the body, or after death, the jnani merges into the spiritual effulgence of the Supreme Lord. The yogi transfers himself to the various higher planets and the devotee goes to the planet of the Supreme Lord, Goloka Vrindavan, or the Vaikuntas, and thus enjoys his eternal spiritual life. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 20th chapter of Krishna, Description of Autumn.